Today, we've got the first look at the new Apple iPhone 16 design, along with plenty of spec confirmations across the board. Now, let me know in the comments who out there is waiting for the iPhone 16, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech. So first up, before we get into the new iPhone 16 reveal, we've got a report over on the Navar blog, and it states that the iPhone 16 Pro models are going to be available with double storage capacity compared to last year, and we're finally going to be getting the first models with 2TB of storage. Now, the change is reportedly due to Apple's change to QLC NAND flash storage, and this allows them to fit more storage into a smaller space, and it's also cheaper than the current triple-level cell that they're using. But the downside to the new storage is slower read and write speeds, so it'll be interesting to see if Apple do go ahead. Next up, we've got more reports on the new capture button that's going to be appearing on the iPhone 16 Pro models, and it may not be what we first thought. Now, previous reports advised it was going to be a touch capacitive button for photo and video, but according to a new report from the information, it's actually going to be a mechanical button, but it's going to respond to different pressures and touches. According to their report, users are going to be able to zoom in and out by swiping left or right on the button, and you can focus with a light press and then activate recording with a solid press. Now, the new button is going to be on the right hand side of the phone under the power button and basically where the millimeter wave antenna is on the USA models. And this is so that it's an convenient place for when you're filming or taking photos in landscape. Now, next up, we've got news that the iPhone 16 Pro Max is going to feature a larger, more advanced primary camera sensor than the predecessor. And of course, it's to improve photo and video. According to Digital Chat Station, we're going to be getting a modified 48 megapixel Sony IMX903, and it's a 1 over 1.14 inch sensor, and it's actually 12% larger than the sensors used in last year's iPhones. And of course, it's going to improve the dynamic range and background blur, as well as being much better in low light conditions. Now, a larger sensor on top of all of the new software upgrades is going to result in much better photos and videos for the iPhone 16. Next up, we have the first reveal of the iPhone 16 thanks to some leaked schematics from Majin Buu on Twitter. And as you can see on the front, we've got two punch holes, but it's important to know that this has always been the design of the iPhone, and the gap in the middle is actually filled with the display to create the dynamic island. On the rear, however, you can see it looks very different with a much smaller camera module and then the two lenses being stacked vertically instead of the diagonal layout that we've had for some time. Now, there were previous rumors of the non-pro iPhone 16s coming with the LiDAR scanner, but if these schematics are correct, then of course, it's just two cameras and an LED flash. When it comes to the iPhone 16 Pro models, we've had many reports about larger displays, so it's now seeming very likely to happen. And we've also had many other rumors about the iPhone 16 Pro models being the first iPhones to have a punch hole camera that looks like this. But Ming-Chi Kuo, however, has reported that the iPhone 16 Pro models are going to have no significant design changes this year apart from larger displays, and that the iPhone 16 focus is going to be on camera and generative AI features. Now, Ming-Chi Kuo has proved himself to be a very credible source, so for me, this pretty much confirms that a punch hole camera is not going to be happening on the iPhone 16. Now, for those of you excited for the iPhone 16 series, we're now going to run through the full specs, design, and the expected pricing for each model in the range to help you guys decide which one is right for you. For my regular viewers, you guys have seen this, so just skip to the next video. But if you're new here, then make sure you hit subscribe now and we'll get right into it. So first up, we have the standard iPhone 16. And with the standard iPhone 16, we get a 6.3 inch OLED display, but unfortunately, this is still going to be an LTPS display. The iPhone 16 is going to have a taller aspect ratio than last year, and it's going to be protected by Ceramic Shield 2. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie camera and face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we've got a 12 megapixel primary camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's powered by the A18 chipset, and it's likely coming with 6 gigabytes of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. It's also powered by a 3450 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging, and it's going to come with advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi Fi 7. Now, it will, of course, ship with iOS 18 and is expected to launch from around $850 in September 2024. Now, next up, we've got the iPhone 16 Plus. With the iPhone 16 Plus, we get a 6.9 inch OLED display. And again, unfortunately, this is another LTPS display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor and is protected by Ceramic Shield 2. 
we get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie cameras and face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we've got a 12 megapixel primary camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's powered by the A18 chipset, and it's likely gonna come with a choice of six gigabytes of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. It's powered by a 4,420 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging, and it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. Now it of course it ships with iOS 18, and it's expected to launch from around $950 in September 24. Next up, we've got the iPhone 16 Pro, now the iPhone 16 Pro has a 6.3 inch 120Hz LTPO OLED display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor, and the Pro is protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie camera and face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we get a 48 megapixel primary camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and then we've got a 12 megapixel Tetra Prism camera with 5x optical zoom. It's powered up by the A18 Pro chipset, and it comes with 8GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage. And it's also powered up by a 3450mAh battery, and fast charging is still unknown at the moment, but we do expect some improvements. And of course, it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. It will, of course, ship with iOS 18, and it's expected to launch from around $1,100 in September 2024. Now finally, we save the best to last, the iPhone 16 Pro Max. With the iPhone 16 Pro Max, we get a 6.9 inch 120Hz LTPO OLED display. Again, like the other phones, it's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor, and it's protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixel selfie cameras and face ID sensors. And then on the rear, we've got a 48 megapixel primary camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel Tetra Prism camera with 5x optical zoom. It's powered up by the A18 Pro chipset. It comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and up to 1 terabyte of storage. And it's powered up by a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. As with the 16 Pro, we don't know the fast charging at the moment, but we do expect to see some improvements. Now it comes up with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7, and it will of course ship with iOS 18, and this one's expected to launch around $1,300 in September 24. So overall, the iPhone 16 series is looking like a great new addition to the lineup, offering plenty of upgrades to the specs, and we could have a slightly new design. With everyone working towards AI inclusion in phones, I imagine Apple is going to be doing a lot of the same and offering more functions via Siri, as well as more image processing using things like AI generative film, and a larger camera sensor on top of all this is going to greatly improve the photography. Now of course, the new chipset is also going to bring a lot more power as well as efficiency for the battery life, and I think all in all, it's going to be a great phone. Now, of course, given the similarities to the predecessor, I can't imagine anyone with an iPhone 15 rushing for an upgrade, but for anyone with an older iPhone or looking to get their first iPhone, it's going to be a great choice. Now, of course, we've still got quite a way to go until the official launch, but we're likely going to receive more and more leaks as we approach it, and of course, I'll be sharing them as soon as they come in. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing in the future.